G'day. Today we're going to configure Elementary OS for Pro Audio production using Bitwig. You can find all the hyperlinks and notes in the description below. The first thing we'll do is ensure our system is up to date. To do this we run apt update and apt dist upgrade. I've already updated my system so there are no packages to install for me. A few packages we do need to install before continuing are git, vim and build essential. Next we'll install the KX Studio repositories. KX Studio is a collection of applications and plugins for audio production. The main tool that we're concerned with is Cadence. Let's follow the instructions on the KX Studio repository page. First we'll install the dependencies. Next we'll download the package file. Install the package file. Update our sources. Then we can install Cadence. Ensure that you choose yes when asked to enable real-time process priority. Next we will use a tool called Real-Time Config Quick Scan. This is a Perl script that is freely available from GitHub. Simply clone the repository change into the directory and run the script. It runs through a checklist and will report on things that we need to change. All of the items in red need to be addressed. For Pro Audio we need to ensure that we're running our CPU at maximum speed. To do this we enable the Performance CPU Governor. This is facilitated by a tool called CPU Freak Utils, so let's install it. Now we'll tell Linux that we want to use the Performance Governor. Don't be scared off by the commands that we're entering here. For the purposes of this tutorial and setting up your system, you don't need to understand in depth what these commands are doing. It's sufficient for you to type them out. Now we'll disable the service that sets the Governor to On Demand which is a power saving governor usually used on laptops. Let's look at our quick scan checklist again. The next two items we will address are swappiness and max user watches. Some Linux systems don't use a swap file, in those cases you won't need the swappiness option. The swappiness option sets the percentage of free memory remaining before swapping to disk and the max user watches parameter sets the number of files your system can monitor with iNotify. Modifying these parameters will ensure your system operates at its most capable. So we'll enter those parameters into the file now. I'm using Vim here, but you could also use Nano or VI. Let's save the file. Revisit our checklist. Next we'll add our user to the audio group. Much of what I'm teaching here is described on the Linux Audio wiki page. Next we'll set values for real-time priority and maximum locked-in memory space. To do this, we'll edit the etc security limits.d audio.conf file. Note that this file was configured for us when we said yes to the real-time process priority question while we were installing Cadence, so we don't need to make any changes in this file.
Now we'll configure grub options to enable threaded IRQs and disable the spectre mitigations. Again, the Linux audio wiki is invaluable for this kind of configuration. We can see that this installation is using the generic kernel. So let's see what options our kernel was built with. Following the instructions, we can see that we need to add the thread IRQs parameter to the etc default grub file. So let's edit that file now. We'll add thread IRQs and mitigations equals off. Save the file and update grub. Now we've addressed all of the real-time config quick scan items. Let's reboot. We're back from a reboot. Let's run the real-time config script again to ensure that we pass all checks. Yep, all green goods is good. Now we'll run Cadence and start Jack. Jack is the audio connection kit that is at the core of any Linux Pro audio system. Cadence does its own checks and here it's reporting that our kernel is not ideal. Ubuntu ships with a low latency kernel, so let's install it. When our new low latency kernel is installed, we can remove the generic kernel. Let's run an apt auto remove to clean up unused packages. And now it's time to reboot again. Let's make sure that we've booted using the new low latency kernel. Yep, we have. Now we'll run cadence. Good news, it's giving us all green too. So now we can configure Jack. Choose the ULSA driver and make sure you have a device selected. I have a Rode USB mic and it's automatically detected in all modern Linux systems. A full discussion of sample rate and buffer is beyond the scope of this video, but I've provided a link to a recommended video below. Let's start Jack. If all goes well, then the Jack status will show started and real time will show yes. Let's see if we can improve our latency. We'll change sample rate to 96,000 and buffer to 128. And good news, our latency is down to 2.7 milliseconds. But we selected 96,000 as our sample rate, so why is it showing 48,000? Sample rates can be limited by your hardware, and in my case, the Rode USB device that I use has a hardware limit of 48,000. So let's choose our final values and start Jack. You may need to experiment with these values in order to balance latency against X runs. We've got a final latency of 5.3 milliseconds and no current X runs. That's great. Now that we have a stable audio core, let's get to the good stuff and install Bitwig. Bitwig is a fantastic door in its own right, but it's made even better by the fact that it runs on all three major operating systems. The other door that I use and recommend for Linux is Reaper, and you can check out reaperblog.net for an amazing set of videos related to Reaper. In the meantime, we'll prepare for the installation. Bitwig uses some i386 libraries, so we'll enable that architecture. Now that the download is finished, let's install Bitwig. Bitwig have some fantastic videos on their website and their YouTube channel. I highly recommend having a look at some of them. Let's change to the downloads directory and apt install the package.
Our Jack server is still nice and stable, no X runs, so let's get making music. Bitwig offers a demo with no time limit, although you won't be able to save your projects. When you first run Bitwig, it will ask you to install the Essentials package. This gives you the basic instrument and plugin presets. So let's install that. While the Essentials package is installing, let's make sure that our audio is configured in Bitwig. Go to the Settings tab, Audio page, and ensure the driver model selected is Jack. Bitwig has an amazing help system. On the Help tab, you'll find links to videos, the 500 plus page user manual, and much more. Now that the Essentials package is installed, let's create our first project. Click on the User tab, New Project, and you beauty, we're ready to make some music. If you have any questions, if something didn't make sense or didn't work, please comment below and I'll help you out. I'd love for you to like and subscribe, but more importantly, I'd love you to go and make your own music. Have fun, see you later!